Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Ripple and XRP are just scoring runs as Congress and the media tear down the SEC's house completely, because it's basically a house of cards, what they have built here. And so, yes, Congress and the media basically double teaming against the SEC right here. And so I've got some things I want to highlight here, and it's just, it's like the more I learn, the more it's like my brain explode, because it's ridiculous the things that these people the, at the SEC, uh, that think, that, you know, at least within the, the, the people running the, the case against Ripple, it's just amazing the things they seem to think they can get away with. It's as though they don't recognize that the internet exists, and everything that their staff said at public events, or at least a ton of it, is, is preserved forever the internet is forever once it's out there it doesn't go away uh, which is good in the case of my moon lambo hot jams i need to disperse those for the universe yes yes but uh there's a particular video clip that was just shared by john deaton's crypto law and uh i i transcribed it it's not long but i transcribed this thing and we got to talk about this. And so in my very last video, which uh, if you haven't seen, I encourage you to check it out. My, my last video, I highlighted new evidence from Ripple indicating there's a document that, uh, that, that proves that the SEC was advising a, uh, a third party. So and we don't know who it is, but a third party um, actually used Bill Henman's Ethereum free pass speech as market guidance. And so I'm not going to rehash that in this video. Uh, th this video will stand alone, so don't feel like you have to have known that to watch this or anything like that. But uh, if you check out the specifics of that if you haven't seen it yet after this video. But this gets even more ridiculous. You want some more evidence that, uh, that the SEC intended for Bill Henman's speech, which they're now claiming is just his personal opinion. You want, you want proof that their actual intent was to use his market guidance? Oh, I've got it. And this is strong evidence in this. And then I've also got some stuff uh, that was shared by Charles B Gasparino with Fox Business Network. Uh, he shared something from Senator Pat to Toomey. And it's just like they're all working in conjunction and tearing down Gary Gensler and his approach to crypto. And also uh, specifically how they're going after after Ripple. But um, I do want to be clear at the outset, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but purely as a hobby, just for fun. And so here's here's the clip in question. And it was shared by Crypto Law. And so there's an individual here named Valerie, and I, should I even try to say this last name? Like, I'm not even trying to be mean about this. Nothing against her personally. I don't know anything about her. Uh, but how, should I, I'm going to try it. Uh, sizz, 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 sizzle, sizz, sizz, pa panic. Nailed it. That's how you say that, right? That's definitely how you say that. Valerie says, sizz, 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 pa panic. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's definitely it. And even if it's not like, that's how she should announce herself. That's what I'd do if I were her. Hi, I'm Valerie says, sizz, 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 panic. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, of course you are. That, that makes sense. But who is she? Check out who she is, because before I read these comments, because they have directly to do with the Hinman speech. I mean, and, oh, I'll mention this, too, actually, before I get to uh, th these comments I'm going to read from her. They're from June 14th, 2018. That is the day, the very same day that William Hinman gave his Ethereum free pass speech. The very same day, June 14th, 2018. So who is she? Well, you can see this announcement from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. This is the official website. And this was released on June 4th, 2018. The Securities and Exchange Commission today announced that Valerie Suzepanik has been named Associate Director of the Division of Corporation Finance and Senior Advisor for Digital Assets and Innovation. Listen to this. For Division Director Bill Henman. <gasps> That's right. She's working for Bill Henman directly under him. And watch how how much this matters. Do you want to know how relevant what she says is? Oh, you're about to find out. It's even more relevant than just that. Or than what you'd think based on that. In this newly created advisory position, Miss Panic will coordinate efforts across all SEC divisions and offices 
regarding the application of U.S. securities laws to emerging digital asset, techno asset technologies and innovations, including initial coin offerings and cryptocurrencies. My friends, this is the crypto gal directly under good old Billy Hinman, who gave the free pass speech for Ethereum. She is directly under him specifically for ICOs and cryptocurrency. And you want to know what she said on the day that Hinman gave his Ethereum free pass speech? Oh, I, I heard the answer. Yes, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I will delay no further. And so this clip was 21 seconds. Um, I don't know exactly what was, I don't know anything about what was said before this, but by context... I can assume, and kind of pretty well tell, that Valerie was responding to some sort of query about how the SEC can provide a path forward with entities within the crypto space that want to make sure they're compliant with securities regulations, right? So that's what the conversation was about. And here is what she said, and I transcribed this. Check this out. Uh, then, if we, and by the way, that's her on the right, if you want to wonder who she is, it's this, uh, this blonde woman right here. Um, so anyway, uh, then if we have something concrete, we can act on that in the form of no action relief or exemptive relief, and that's one path that I'm laying out. But there are obviously others, and I think a lot of guidance will be given out in speeches and statements because we're not trying to regulate a situation that's hypothetical. Ba bam there you go. Right under Billy Hinman, the day of the Hinman speech for Ethereum getting its free pass, and she's acknowledging right there, guidance will be given out from speeches and statements. But I thought that it was the case that speeches and statements were just those of the individual that stated them and not official position of the SEC. Isn't that what they're claiming now again and again and again and again like we're idiots and like the freaking internet didn't exist so we couldn't go back and check what the hell they actually said? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on here. Unbelievable. It's like they, they really think that you're stupid. They really do. S-T-L-L-P-I-D, stupid. But uh, if anything, they would be. My gosh, they're just sloppy or, or cocky or all of that. I don't know, some weird blend of those. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's stunning to me. It really is stunning to me. She actually said that. And that's such a bad approach. And so you can sit here thinking like back then... Like, they were openly saying this stuff because they didn't realize it would come around from a legal perspective to bite them on the rear side. But even outside of that, this is bad and horrendous policy, and they're all complicit in this approach. They're all totally okay with this. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm not going to officially say anything, and uh, we are going to sue you, though. <laughs> what the hell kind of approach is this? It's a disgusting approach. And then there's this from Charles Gasparino with Fox Business Network. He said the following. This is in a tweet from just the other day. The main problem, in my humble opinion, with the SEC approach to regulating crypto through uneven enforcement actions is that it will create so much distrust among the investing public when the price bubble pops, and it will, causing significant investor losses. Well, yeah, I mean, so I tend to agree with that mostly. The, um, the part where maybe perhaps I differ a little bit is I think the bubble's going to inflate and pop regardless. But certainly his, his point's not lost to me. It's a, it's a legitimate point, which is, is simply that uh, if, if there's not if there's less confidence uh, as a result of the SEC's actions and inactions, uh, yeah, that's going to impact uh, crypto participation for sure, including in, investor uh, investor confidence and all, all that jazz. So yeah, the, the point's definitely not lost to me. I was just making like a broader point that as far as the bubble, yeah, it's, it's going to inflate and then it's going to pop uh, either way. Uh, but, but but the results would be worse. Yes, it, I, I do understand that. And then there was this from Charles Gasparino. Breaking, Senator Toomey calls on Gary Gensler to provide crypto regulatory clarity following Fox Business's reporting on the matter. And so take a look at this. This is some rich stuff right here. And this, this letter is from just yesterday. Um, to the Honorable Gary Gensler, Chair. Ooh, I think they accidentally threw in a word there they didn't mean to. All right, I'll just read it as is. <laughs> Dear Chair Gensler, this is from Senator Pat Toomey. Thank you for your testimony before the Senate Banking Committee on September 14th, 2021. I write to follow up on the concerns I expressed at the hearing about the need for regulatory clarity around emerging technologies like cryptocurrencies, including stablecoins. For investors to benefit from a fair and competitive marketplace 
regulators must proactively provide rules of the road to industry. Now, unfortunately, the Securities and Exchange Commission has instead adopted a strategy of regulation by enforcement in this area. At the hearing, you noted the SEC's success in pursuing crypto-related enforcement actions. In many of these enforcement actions, the SEC did not identify the securities involved or the rationale for their status as securities, which would have provided much needed public regulatory clarity. I'm going to pause there just to give a little, give a little golf clap right there. Absolutely. Any, this is why I keep saying any unbiased person with at least half a brain that just absorbs this information for the first time can tell that what Gary Gensler and the rest of the assets over at the SEC are claiming about there being sufficient regulatory clarity, it's pure bunk. It's bogus. It is not true. And they know it because they're not stupid. They just don't want to commit to anything. I'm telling you, they're so non-committal. Like, uh, girls out there, I'll tell you what, or girls or boys, it doesn't matter. Don't date the SEC. You're going to get your heart broken. They're non-committal, right? They're very non-committal. <laughs> anyway, Pat continues. This approach appears related to your belief that, quote, the probability is quite remote that any given cryptocurrency platform has zero securities, end quote. However, the SEC has a responsibility to do more than just provide probabilistic estimates. My concerns about the SEC's lack of regulatory clarity are shared by others, including SEC commissioners. In one recent enforcement action, SEC commissioners Hester Peirce and Elad Roisman stated that they were disappointed, that's a quote, disappointed, by the SEC's failure to explain which digital assets were securities. They stated this omission was, quote, symptomatic of the SEC's reluctance to provide additional guidance about how to determine whether a token is being sold as part of a securities offering or which tokens are securities, end quote. True words never been spoken, my friends. In an effort to obtain that additional guidance, attached are questions for the record for the recent hearing. Many of them would give industry clarity on developing promises, technologies, uh, technologies within the confines of existing laws and regulations. Please provide detailed answers so that innovators have the guidance they need to ensure domestic investment and innovation in these technologies. Sincerely, Pat Toomey, ranking member. member. Golf clap right there. Hell yeah, absolutely. And so there you have it. Like The SEC is getting it from all sides, and rightfully so. You got, again, you got Congress and mainstream media coming after them. And they, I really think they just thought like they'd just keep winning. There wouldn't be a public uproar. They had no idea what they were getting into when they messed with the XRP community. Because like we're, we're not just going to take it laying down. There's a reason that there's a public uproar. It's because they've harmed XRP holders. They've harmed us. They have financially harmed us. Now, for me, I, I happen to have held my XRP through uh, the, the worst of what they caused in terms of downward price action. So financially, I'm whole. I'm, I'm, fi I'm fine. But I still believe that even beyond that, well, beyond, well beyond, a couple of things, beyond the fact that people did understandably panic sell. In that case, it's quite understandable, to be honest with you. Like there's a legit uncertainty as to whether or not you'd even be able to sell your XRP if you didn't do it right then, since potentially every exchange could have uh, halted or delisted XRP in the United States. I, I, I totally understand it. Uh, th that's the most like real fear I've, I've ever seen anyone encounter in crypto, to be honest with you. Um, but... Uh, but but beyond that, I still think the XRP price today it's it's artificially suppressed as a result of uh, of this SEC action against Ripple, and I, I, and look, the XRP still moves in tandem. I'm not saying it won't go on some sort of rally necessarily. We'll see what happens. No, we know for sure what's what it's going to look like the you know the price action, but uh, but certainly in the short term, I do think that look XRP. It's still in the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. It's the only one that hasn't seen its all-time high yet. And I know it lags behind historically the rest, but still, it's kind of surprising we haven't seen a bit more. And so I think that's because it's it's left behind now. Uh, still, when it comes to parabolic price action, I certainly anticipate that once people plow in, inevitably, as money cycles through, as the bubble inflates for the entire crypto asset class, it's not going to be about fundamentals or this or that. It's, it's, it's XRP is going to be noticed. It's one of the top 10 cryptocurrencies. And I still believe all the money in the world, basically, is going to flow into it. But uh, it, it's it's certainly, I, I think, like, like there's a good case to be made that it is suppressed right now. So there we are. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say I write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo.